Hi, welcome to today's video about quantum dots, a new nano world. This is a nice picture of quantum dots of uh, cadmium selenide. Now you can see the crystal size is from 2 nanometers to 4.2 nanometers. Quantum dots are semiconductors, um, nanocrystals of nanometer size. They have different optical and electronic uh, properties compared to large particles of the same compound. This is a picture of uh, quantum confinement of nanoparticles. At the right, this is the bulk mode material with its energy levels and its uh, band gap. And at the left, that's the nanoparticles. Uh, you get an increase of energy states and the band gap uh, when the electrons approach the electron holes. That's why these energy levels are stretched and the uh, band gap of uh, delta E nano is much bigger than the band gap of the bulk mode material. This is the standard model in quantum mechanics, that's the particle in a box. Um, it uh, describes the trajectories of a particle, uh, A, uh, top left, that's uh, Newton's laws of uh, classical mechanics. Uh, the other five, uh, B to F, uh, are Schrodinger's equation of quantum mechanics, um, the uh, blue, as the real part of the wave function, and the red is the imaginary part. Uh, you can see B, C, and D are stationary en energy states. They are called eigenstates. E and F are not eigenstates. This is a co-motion functions of a system with seven electrons in a harmonic confining potential. The size of the dots represent, represent uh, the weight of each configuration. So this configuration a very high weight than this um, with the smaller dots. And a point ab about uh, quantum mechanics is uh, you have quantized energy levels, not continuous. Um, in my last video about atom second physics, we had an example um, hydrogen breathing. Uh, the electron of the hydrogen atom can uh, be in the I 1s orbital with its energy, in the 2s orbital or the 2p orbital, but it can be in between. And this is the basis of uh, spectroscopy. Uh, you can take light uh, from a distant star and analyze the spectroscopic lines, and then you can find uh, elements um, that are in this uh, star, as an example. And this is a picture of the energy levels of uh, quantum dots to compare to other materials. At the left is a uh, top picture that's metal. This is uh, energy bands that overlap. Uh, second is the bulk semiconductor with its uh, small energy gap. Uh, this is the quantum dot. It has a bigger energy gap and uh, energy levels are also stretched. And at the right, um, that's an, a normal single molecule. For a single molecule, the HOMO and the LUMO are important. The HOMO is this. It's the highest occupied molecular orbital. And this is the LUMO. That's the lowest unoccupied, unoccupied molecular orbital. This is important for the properties of the molecule. At the bottom, that's the change in the quantum dot's band gap um, and the photoluminescence emission wavelengths, which is the color, with increasing particle size. The small particle has a big uh, band gap, uh, it's blue, and the big particle has a small band gap, uh, and that's why it's uh, red. And the other colors are in between. This is a picture of luminescence, that's the spontaneous emission of radiation from an electronically or vibrationally excited species. This is a cold light. And in this picture you can see a luminescence of carbon-based quantum dots that are made from lemon juice. Lemon juice is heated uh, for three hours at uh, 120 degrees Celsius, and that's how you make this uh, carbon-based quantum dots. And there are two approaches uh, for synthesis of quantum dots, uh, top-down and bottom-up methods. Uh, here are two examples of the bottom-up method. Bottom-up means uh, from tiny particles like atoms, ions, building this uh, quantum dots. Top-down is um, from a bulk material breaking it down to quantum dots. That's the difference. And there is a colloidal synthesis, um, that's the bottom-up. Um, you can make quantum dots of cadmium selenide, cadmium sulfide, and halide perovskites. This method is highly tunable because you can uh, 
gives you variable sizes. You can control the size of the quantum dots. A second method is the hydrothermal synthesis from a solution that's also a bottom-up uh, approach. The size of the quantum dots uh, depends on the temperature, uh, pressure, and the reaction time. This is a nice image of a colloidal solution, a Zema conductor, quantum dots, in cuvettes under a UV light. This is an example of the synthesis of cadmium selenide quantum dots um, with ligands. And you have these two organometallic compounds they are heated to 180 degrees Celsius. When you get a nucleation, you get the smallest uh, quantum dots, tiny crystals. And the next step uh, only happens uh, if you heat it to 250 degrees Celsius. And uh, this is the way to control the growth of the quantum dots, by controlling the time for heating. This is an example of quantum, quantum dots that are uh, delivered into cells uh, with cell-penetrating peptides called CPP. You can see uh, this quantum dot has uh, two layers, uh, cadmium selenide core and the outer layer zinc sulfide. The sulfide can make uh, uh, sulfur bridges with uh, peptides, DNA, other organic molecules with thiols, and the zinc can make uh, complex bonds with, uh, for example, pyrroles. And this is an uh, application uh, is for bioimaging and uh, in the medicine for um, delivery of um, drugs into the cell. This is a quantum dot labeled the uh, UVR-A2 molecules, and these are DNA repair proteins. Uh, this animation shows its interaction uh, with the DNA tight ropes at the bottom. These are DNA tight ropes. And these uh, three cylinders have each a uh, size of 4 micrometers. It's very fascinating. There's another small movie of uh, nanobody functionalized quantum dots. They are probing intracellular dynamics. This is a picture of the motor protein kinesin 1 transporting quantum dots that are connected to the protein VHH, GFP, along uh, microtubes. And this is, uh, again, scale of uh, one micrometer, which is one thousandth of a millimeter. There's another application for quantum dots. That's the quantum dot solar cell. Here in this picture, you can see 16 electrodes um, this solar cell contains eight quantum dot layers, each is connected with uh, two electrodes. Uh, for quantum dots, you can use the material zinc oxide, uh, lead sulfide, and perovskites. Uh, in 2022, the efficiency, maximum efficiency was 18%, but the theoretical limit is at 66%. And again, you can adjust the band, uh, band gap uh, by controlling the size of the quantum dots. Another application, a quantum dot circuit. This is a carbon nanotube double quantum dot device on silicon. Uh, the quantum uh, computer is far superior to compared to today's normal computers because of the qubit, which can uh, have more than two states. This allows uh, parallel computing, and the quantum dot quantum, quantum computer is uh, up to one million times faster than a normal computer. This is a picture of the quantum dot display QLED. And this is a 8K TV. Uh, quantum dots are used as uh, light emitting particles. Um, for example, you can use uh, cadmium compounds. Uh, they were replaced by indium compounds, they are safer. And the advantage of the quantum di uh, dot display is uh, it's uh, very bright, has a long life. Uh, but there's a new uh, technology coming that's micro LEDs. Uh, the uh, micro LEDs could replace the quantum dot displays. Um, for example, those are based on gallium nitride because they have a better energy efficiency. 
This is a picture of a quantum dot pyramid. Um, this allows a fine sp structure splitting of excitons. Excitons are uh, pairs of electrons and electron holes. And this allows the uh, detection of entangled photons. The entanglement is another quantum uh, mechanics phenomena. Uh, entangled particles are a group of particles. Um, their properties are de dependent on each other. And uh, what's fascinating is, uh, even if one of these particles were in a, at the other end of a galaxy, this entanglement still uh, uh, stays. And uh, this is a really fascinating phenomenon. And this is a beautiful picture of the quantum uh, dots of cadmium sulfide, hollow spheres. And they are used for highly sensitive cellular imaging, for monitoring of cellular processes. Um, this really looks uh, like art. This is a nice picture of uh, Niels Bohr. He was a physicist from Denmark. Um, he wo uh, was the winner of the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1922 for his uh, orbital model, atom model, and uh, for his um, work on quantum mechanics. This is a quote of Niels Bohr. Uh, those who are not shocked when they first come across quantum mechanics cannot possibly have understood it. If anybody says he can think about quantum problems without getting giddy, that only shows he has not understood the first thing about them. And these are the Nobel Prize winners of, um, in chemistry of uh, 2023. That's uh, Mungi G. Bavendi, Louis E. Bruce, and Alexei I. Kimov. And they have won the Nobel Prize uh, for fundamental work on uh, quantum dot science. And this uh, new nano world of quantum dots is still at the early phase, and there will be uh, many new discoveries in the near future. Um, I will put the uh, links to the scientific papers in the description box. You can uh, check them out. And that was today's video about uh, quantum dots, a new nano world, fascinating new nano world. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.